hear a signal on one band, that band, they'll output a signal on a different band. Just memorize that. It's not worth getting into it right here. And the repeaters will do the same thing, by the way. Ah, finally finished six. So we're going to go to seven. <coughs> finally. Okay, he tells this one, going on the air, finally. Going on the air. Uh, see, let's talk about many of the issues that you need to understand when you get started on the air, which means on the radio, okay? Many of today's transceivers have two ways to change or select the frequency. So the first is to turn the BFO knob. BFO means variable frequency oscillator. Now let me explain that, what that is. <coughs> you do not find that on these radios, okay? You find it on these. <coughs> and when I turn, if I had this radio on, if I turn the dial, you would see the frequency change. It would change, 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 change. And I would stop where I want it to stop. The circuit here is called the BFO frequency, the variable frequency oscillator. And that's the circuit that's hooked to that knob, okay? Secondly, use a keypad, typically on the microphone on the handheld. So, on handhelds, sure, I can sit here and click, 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 click. But a lot of these handhelds have a feature where I can simply punch in on the number button here. And the answer is very quick. 14538. Enter. And bingo, it'll go to 145.38 megahertz. So, there's two ways to get to a frequency. Turn a dial or punch a button. Now I'm here, I can actually click, 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 click. A little different than turning the dial, okay? That's what we're talking about. <coughs> uh, here. And using, when using an FM on your radio, uh, you would normally hear a lot of receiver output noise when there is no incoming signal. Now let's, let's just give you a demonstration of this. Okay, let's turn this on. Now the radio's on, you don't hear any noise. Well, let's see if I can remember how to do this now. So if I just had the radio on, normally, that's just the noise that's there. Okay? And you're only going to be there until a so somebody comes on and starts talking, and it would be nice and clear. Well, Jesus said, well, I'm going to leave the radio on in case of every emergency. We'll just, we'll hear the emergency calling us. You're going to hear that all day. <coughs> so there's a feature in the radios. Just imagine now we've got a field of hay, and the hay is right, just like this is part of the hay. Well, and all I'm hearing is noise. And you're not there. So what I do is I have a little electronic circuit that I can bring up. Okay. And now I don't hear the noise, but when you come on, it's like you need standing up. You see, this is the noise. Okay. I got a circuit that will change that. <coughs> Bingo. I've just raised a little bar inside the radio that said, unless the signal is this loud, noise, don't put anything on the uh, on the speaker. So now it's you can shut it off at a certain level, but if the radio signal comes on, it's stronger than that. Ah, I'll hear that signal. Okay, now let me get out of that feature. I think I just do this. Yeah, that's it. Okay. okay. <coughs> ah, so the receiver output noise can be muted by using the squelch control, and that's what that's called. That's called a squelch control. Okay. It's sometimes called a Carrier squelch control and is used both when an RF signal is either present or absent. Just memorize that. All you want to know is the squelch <coughs> control. Carrier squelch. Oh, okay. There's only a couple things here to memorize, but let me just give you that what happened. Back in the days when amateur radio was only Morse code, way back in the early 1900s, it was only Morse code. There was no such thing as a microphone. And so the ham radio operators had to talk to each other by Morse code. Well, the last thing they wanted to do was have to send too many letters. So it's nice to send words, but, you know, why send all those letters if you don't have to? So what they did is they made a lot of abbreviations. So, for instance, someone asked me, before we started here, if I want to call somebody, what do I say? Who asked me that question? Ah, there you go. 
And so the Morse code people had abbreviations for everything. So the two letters CQ meant calling any station. <coughs> so if I was on Morse code, instead of saying, instead of typing all letters, C A L L I N G, A N N L, instead of doing just go CQ, 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 and I'd give my callers K1 DFO. And if someone told you calling CQ, they would answer you back. Hey, K1 DFO, this is so. They had a whole bunch of other ones which you don't have to memorize. The letters DX meant some distant station. It's a different way. Any station outside the country I'm in is a DX station to me. Okay? Even if I'm sitting in San Diego and you're in Tijuana, you're 10, 15 miles away, you're still DX. Okay? 73s <coughs> meant best regards, but <coughs> at the end of my message, instead of saying, hey, that's it, sign our best regards, I just send the letters 73. Okay? Uh, if you were talking to a lady, 88 meant love and kisses. Uh, the abbreviation for a male was OM, only man. The abbreviation for a female was YL, young lady. They have, they have dozens and dozens of these. That's the only one you got to memorize there. Then they had some other ones that they called Q signals. Don't ask me why. Uh, and the QTH meant my location. So my QTH, uh, my home QTH is on Palos Verdes. My current QTH is here in Mojave Beach. See, it's my location. Either my home location or whatever. Uh, when I talk with another ham, on Morse code, on microphone, it's a QSO, QSO. That's a conversation in progress. This is one they want you to memorize. QRL means interference from another station. So if I'm talking to you and we're being interfered with sort of accidentally or intentionally, it doesn't make a difference, by someone who's very close to us in frequency, it's, they're causing some QRM. Okay? Uh, QSL, back in the days when I got my license back in the 50s, every time you made a contact with a ham, you sent them a card. And it verified that you had had a QSO that day, and that was your proof that you talked to that person. Now, if you had a whole bunch of these cards, you could get various awards. They're called QSL cards, okay? And QSY means let's change frequency. So if you and I say, hey, let's move down the frequency, but instead of saying all that, especially in Morse code, say, let's QSY. That's it. So the only ones you have to remember are QRM, QSY, and CQ. Uh, there's tons and tons of these. What happened was when we went on microphones, finally, back in the late 50s, to start using microphones, the hams had already been Morse code people. They kept using these same acronyms. So even when people are using microphones now, the trend is to use all these same acronyms. <coughs> and a lot more. See, when we transmit and then receive on the same frequency, it's called simplex. Okay? So when you transmit and receive back and forth, we're talking back and forth on the same frequency, that's called simplex. <coughs> now, that's not what a repeater does. Okay? We'll talk about that. Okay? Because uh, later on, we talk this. If you hear a station calling CQ, then say the other station's call, then say your call. This is not a repeater now, okay? Uh, but you actually say their call, and you say this is your call. Okay, here's what happens. If you hear someone say CQ, 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 this is K1DFO. Okay, well, you can you hear them, and you want to talk to them, say K1DFO, this is W6AM. So you give their call and your call. That's all that says, okay? But on repeaters, we do something else. So this is really for non-repeater operation. When we transmit on one frequency and listen on a different frequency, this is called duplex. This is the repeater, okay? So when I'm listening to a repeater, I listen on a frequency. But when I go to transmit, this radio changes, check that out. Radio changes frequencies and transmits on the repeater's listening frequency, remember that? The repeater listens on one frequency and then rebroadcasts what you're saying on another frequency. So the repeater has two frequencies, one that it listens on, one that it transmits on. Okay, so when we're on repeaters, we're technically using two frequencies, the one we're listening on, the one we're transmitting on, that's called duplex. When calling another station on repeater, say the other station's call sign, then say this is, and then say your call sign. Now keep in mind, everything in parentheses is not what's in the question pool, it's my thing. So if someone on a repeater says, uh, and this is K1 DFO. Does anybody want to talk? Because they don't say CQ on repeaters. You can come back and say, hey, K1 DFO, this is W6AM. So it's the same technique as up in here okay, when you use a simplex. If you're using a handheld and someone tells you your signal was strong, but now it's weak or distorted, then try to move a few feet. Well, see, we're inside this building right now. So the signal's going to hit, let's say, go to the repeater or go down the street to someone we're talking to. <coughs> Part of these walls might be in the way, or the metal door. 
you say, well, gee, your signal changes. So what you want to do is just kind of talk and just move a little and find a place where everything's fine. That's all that says, okay? Sometimes this problem is due to random reflections called multipath. Okay, I've got to explain what that means. Let's say we're outside and we're near Palace Road, near the hill. Well, which way does the radio signal go when it comes off this antenna? In, everywhere, right? Well, let's see. If I'm at Palace, the, the, the bottom of the hill, PV on um, Drive, and you're in Torrance, up at Hawthorne, and we're just talking to each other, that's fine. The signal went right on Torrance Boulevard. But the signal also goes up on Palace Road and bounces off of the hill. So your radio's down, you're down on Torrance, <coughs> up on Boulevard, and a signal's coming right at you. Okay. But technically, my radio signal went up on Palos Verdes because it went in all directions, and it bounced off. And when it bounces off, it can come also back to your radio. So think about that. A signal got to your radio, and then micro microseconds later, the same signal came to your radio. What does that sound like on your radio? It sounds like a little echoing effect, or sometimes it sounds like it's noisy or something, but that's called multicapping. That's all you got to know. It says, when a mobile station is moving, okay, so there's, there's my mobile radio right there, and it's in my car, and I'm talking. Sometimes their signal does a rapid flutter sound, which is called pick a fence. <coughs> what does that mean? Let's say I'm in one of the <coughs> downtown LA, and I'm talking to you <coughs> someplace, or repeater. But as I'm on one of the streets, there's a building here, then there's the street, then there's a building, and there's another street, there's a building, and there's a street. So if I'm just going this way, every time there's a big metal building between me and that repeater up in Palos Verdes, my signal is weak. But then as soon as I get to that intersection, oh, my signal goes straight to the hill, nice and clean. So it gets weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong. That's called picket fencing. That's all that is, OK? Uh, let's see, pick a okay. If you're ever told that your transmissions are unintentionally interfering with another station, not unintentionally is the magic word, and you simply give your ID, K1DFO, and you say, thank you very much, and move to the front. <coughs> so if I'm on here talking to someone on, let's say, that, that radio, or not on a repeater, it's a simplex now, and maybe I didn't realize it, but there was another station on a frequency that's very close, I might be interfering with them a little bit. So they say, could you please move? Yep, no problem. Just change frequencies to move. You give your station call address for us, and move. Contest are popular for ham radio activity which involve contacting as many stations as possible in a specific period. There's lots and lots and lots of contests in the amateur radio. Uh, one of them is uh, on the last weekend in February. It's called Field Day, where you try to contact <coughs> as many other hams in the country as you can in 24 hours. And then there's winners. Okay? There's a contest where during a weekend, try to contact a ham at as many lighthouses in the world as possible. And there's hams who will go to those lighthouses and set up a station just to be part of the contest. Or there's contests where you can, on one weekend, try to get a contact with other ham on as many islands in the world as possible. So there's tons and tons of contests, but whenever there's a contest, it's always about making as many contacts as possible with whatever the contest is about. Uh, there are dozens of these contests, and there are many awards given out for hams who have been who have the best score. So the, some magazine, like the CQ magazine or the QSD, the magazine will sponsor the contest. You'll send all your information to them, and whoever get, gets the winning things will get an award from the magazine. When you make a contact in a contest, you send the minimum information. Typically, it's simply your ID, your station call and the contest exchange. So some contests will say, you give you station ID, K1DL, and you give a signal report, whatever the signal, 5955. Five. Or you say, uh, you're my contact number 421. Okay, fine, the other person writes it down. Okay? And then, of course, the next person I talk to, they'll be like, well, you're my 422. So whatever the, the contest says is the station exchange, you give that and give you call sign, that's all it's doing. Uh, there are times when you're using your HT inside of a building. Okay, now, this could be part of the issue. As noted in the prior section, as the frequency increases, the wavelength decreases. Okay, as the frequencies get higher and higher, the length of that wave gets shorter and shorter. Okay? So the higher frequencies have shorter wavelengths. Okay? You say, so what? These shorter wavelengths can penetrate the structure of a building much easier. So if I wanted to talk from this room, 
to another room on Simplex, I can go on the 140 